Thank you, Mayor. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Rob Plum. I've been a city attorney here for about 15 or 16 years. I'm with the Langdale Wallison Law Firm in Valdosta. Uh, there are people up here way more qualified than me to, to tell you how DEAs work and what all they can bring to the city, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what a DEA is, how it's created, and, and what its powers and, and the limits on those powers are. DEAs are a creation of the Georgia Constitution and the state legislature. All of the rules and statutes governing DEAs are found in one section of the Georgia Code. Um, I'm sure that number would be anybody who's interested. But the, by statute, the Georgia legislature created a downtown development authority for every municipality in the state of Georgia. Each municipality activates its DDA, if it chooses to do so, by adopting a resolution that identifies the area that they call the downtown development area, I'll just refer to it as the development area, within the city. Um, the statute states as the purpose of the Development Authority Act is the, is the revitalization and redevelopment of the city's core business district. And all actions of the downtown authority once it's established are supposed to be directed toward that goal. Once the city adopts its activating resolution, the city appoints a board of directors for the authority. The board consists of seven individuals. They're initially appointed for staggered terms, but um, eventually the, the directors would each serve six-year terms. <coughs> One member of the board may be an elected official from the city. To, to, be a, to be a director, you've got to either be a taxpayer of the, of the municipality or a business owner or operator of a business within the designated development area or a combination of those two. After the Downtown Development Authority is activated and a board is established, the city council still retains the power, certain powers, and those are set out in the statute in section 36-42-6. The council can amend, can go back and amend the geographic area that has been designated as the development area. It can appoint new directors if necessary, and it can disapprove any proposed um, bond issues or promissory notes or other obligations proposed or debts proposed by the development authority. The powers of the, of the downtown development authority are also spelled out in the Georgia Code in section 3642.8. It's a long list of powers, but essentially it's, it's a broad list of powers intended to enable the authority to promote revitalization, rehab of downtown buildings. Um, they're off, the, the authority is authorized to apply for certain governmental loans and, and grant programs. The authority can own property, um, it can sell property, it can lease property. But I guess it's also significant what a DBA cannot do. The DBA itself cannot create tax districts or levy taxes. The DBA cannot exercise the power of eminent domain, which cannot condemn or take property for public purposes. Those powers are retained by the city council. That was an amendment to the, the old DBA authority code did authorize DDAs to have that power of eminent domain, but that was amended back in 2006, and as of now, that power can no longer be vested in the, in the authority itself. Now, another issue that is of concern is, this, uh, is the notion of taxes and tax districts. The Georgia Constitution authorizes cities and counties to create special tax districts of, of many different kinds. One you're probably all familiar with is, is SPLOS, 
where by statute the entire county is designated as a special tax district. The, the, so cities already have the power to create special tax districts within their boundaries. The DDA Act authorizes the creation of special tax districts within the designated development area. Um, and to use the taxes generated in that district to fund projects of, projects of the authority. There's no tax district and there's no tax that's automatically created or levied by the creation of a DDA. Assessment of a, the creation of a special tax district is just one of many ways that a DDA can fund its operations. Um, probably the other common methods are that the, the authority can issue bonds, um, but probably the most commonly used method is just that the DDA makes certain loan and grant programs available to, to property owners within the DDA that would otherwise, would otherwise not be available. Any project proposed by the development authority can only be for the purpose of revitalizing or redeveloping the core business district or promoting trade or commerce. An example of the thing, sort of things that a, a development authority cannot do would be you cannot create a DDA to build new government office buildings or to repave all your streets. Uh, those are general governmental functions that are beyond the scope of what a DDA can do. Trying to think what other main points you want to hit. The debt, if a, if a development authority issues bonds or um, incurs debt, borrows money to buy a building or, or to do a project, the obligations of the DDA are not considered public debt. They're not debts of the city, so they don't count against the city debt limit. Um, it's a, the authority is a separate entity unto itself. It's a quasi-governmental, it is a governmental agency of a sort, but it, um, it is not, it, it's mainly a conduit for the funding of, of development projects within the designated area. Now the creation, the designation of what constitutes the development area is up to the, initially up to the discretion of the city council who draws the map. And like I said, once the authority is established, the, um, the city council retains the authority to go back and amend that development age, that development area if, if it chooses to do so. So I think that kind of hits the, the main points of, of how you set up a DDA and what it can and cannot do. Of course, I'd be happy to answer any questions during the question and answer session. Thank you.